care laws. Here's what I think. All right, but before we get into it, I just want to give a quick shout out to Get Some Aloha Kind Grinds in Corvallis, Oregon. It's about an hour and a half south of Portland. They've been supporting the channel and showing love. So I just wanted to show some love back. Keep doing what you're doing. I know what it's like to be away from Hawaii, be in the mainland. You're just trying to hold it together, bro, and I got it. That's Get Some Aloha Kind Grinds. That's at 520 Southwest 4th Street. Go check them out. They're straight out of Haula, so it's legit. Go get you some. All right, so today, here's what we're going to do. I want to get into the Catherine Kailoa stuff. Everybody's been asking about it. So basically, I'm going to share my heart on the situation. Before I say anything else, let me just say this. We've all made mistakes. Every one of us has done things that we wish you could take back. So I'm not here to condemn anybody. I'm just going to give you my perspective as an ex-officer with the Honolulu Police Department. That's important because it was so highly involved. But I'm also going to be as objective as I can. If you don't know the Catherine Kailoa situation, let me give you a quick rundown of Catherine Kailoa. So Catherine Kailoa is 50 years old and grew up in Kahalu on the island of Oahu in Hawaii. She is an attorney, basically. She went to Midpac in high school and she went to Chaminade and then she got her Juris Doctorate, which is the highest degree you can get in law from UH Manoa at the Richardson School of Law. She was a private attorney from 2000 to 2006, and eventually in 2009, she was appointed director of the State Office of Environmental Quality Control. And then Catherine Kailoa becomes the deputy prosecutor for the city and county of Honolulu. To give you some perspective, I started at the police academy on July 5th, 2011. So she was accused of stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars right when I became an officer. Okay, so Louis Kailoa became the 10th police chief of the Honolulu Police Department on November 25th, 2009. So essentially two years before I became a police officer, Louis Kailoa became the police chief. Um, what I know about Louis Kailoa was from the beginning, I always heard great things. Everybody liked Louis Kailoa. Uncle Louis, we called him. Everybody that I knew liked him. I didn't know anybody that talked bad about him. Could that have been because he was a police chief? Yes. But also, like, I heard he was an officer's chief, you know, like he was a chief that was there for the officers. Typically, you have two types of leaders. You either have the type of leader who is tries to think his way through crime prevention and crime solving. And usually those people are really book smart and they have a lot of ideas, but they forget about patrol, which is the backbone of the police department. Patrol, the ones that make things happen. Without patrol, we don't fight crime. We don't catch bad guys. That's the truth. So brass basically sit in their offices and talk about doing things and make appearances and motivate people and manage and supervise. Whereas the actual officers that are on patrol, they're the ones working. They're the ones going out there and implementing the whether good ideas or stupid ideas that you're putting out there. So Louis K. Law was the police chief in 2009. I started in 2011. So he would occasionally come to police academy and run with us because uh, we, we ran all the time. He would do like three mile runs with us or whatever. And uh, he would give us little speeches here and there and everybody liked him. I'd heard from old timers that he was a good dude. You know, he just was always there for the officers. He thought about us. So before implementing things, he would think about the officers. He would talk to the officers. He was in the Metro squad or the essentially like the crew units early on. So he understood plain clothes. He understood what blue and whites were going through. I don't know. I always had a lot of confidence in him. And then once I graduated Academy, I would run into him all the time in the gym. Like he would be deadlifting and squatting and he would talk to me and I'd be working out like 5 a.m. or whatever. He'd come in at 5 a.m. before work and he'd work out with us. And so he'd just talk and chat and he was fun and all the old timers knew him. And it was just like, he was always super cool. And he deadlifted like a beast. I mean, he, dude was super strong. He could squat a lot of weight. It was like, just like the, the chief that you wanted, you looked up to him. At least I did. And then when I went undercover in 2013, 2014, my unit answered to him when I was undercover. He was the guy for us. And I just liked, I liked him a lot. Uh, I won an award in 2013 or 14. I had a private ceremony because I was undercover. And it was up on the fourth floor, which is where Brass is. And 
he gave me my award and I took pictures with him and I wasn't allowed to do it at like wherever they did it, the Blaisdell or wherever they usually did award ceremonies. I had to have a private one cause I was on the cover. So upstairs, my wife and kids and the chief, my unit. And that was it. Like I really had a lot of confidence. I really liked the dude. I just always did. He was likable. He's a super likable dude. Good Hawaiian guy. Like your quintessential good Hawaiian that's how I looked at him. I always looked up to him. Here's why we're talking about Catherine K. Law. Catherine K. Law lied, cheated, and bullied her own family, including her 100-year-old kapuna, Florence Puana, out of almost $600,000. And when her uncle, Gerard Puana, began to investigate. Catherine K. Law, the supervisor, deputy prosecutor of the city and county of Honolulu, and her husband, Louis K. Law, the chief of police of the Honolulu Police Department, again lied, cheated, and bullied Catherine's uncle, Gerard Puana, by attacking his reputation, framing him, having him followed, and eventually arrested for a crime he did not commit. It's hauntingly poetic to me that both Louis K. Law and his wife, Catherine, at one point, raised their right hand and gave an oath, swore before their communities. I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Hawaii, and that I will faithfully discharge my duties as an officer of the law to the best of my ability. I took that oath too, along with thousands of others. So here's the quick version for those of you who don't know. About a decade ago, Catherine Kailoa forged documents, forged the notarization of those documents, and took control of her grandmother, Florence Puana's estate. She set up a reverse mortgage on Florence Puana's home and stole virtually all of it. She then went on to live a life of luxury, extravagant parties, vacations, Hawaiian luxury at its finest. By the time her uncle Gerard noticed what was happening, it was too late. He never signed those documents. She forged his name. He was never served estate paperwork. There was no trust paperwork. So Gerard, he went right to his attorney. He would not keep quiet, but he was in a tough spot. Can you imagine? It's David and Goliath. He's suing his deputy prosecutor niece, who's married to arguably the most powerful man in Oahu, maybe in Hawaii. That's when Catherine started to threaten her uncle and her grandmother, flexing her status and even using her position of power. But Gerard just didn't quit. It wasn't long before they were in court Gerard suing Catherine for stealing all that money. So that's when Catherine and Louis K. Law started to attack Gerard Puana, trying to assassinate his character. They framed and even executed a plan to destroy Gerard's credibility. Somehow, they orchestrated the theft of their mailbox and even doctored the footage of their security cameras. They reported to the Honolulu Police Department and eventually the United States Postal Inspector that her uncle Gerard had stolen her mailbox and that she had the proof. All right, here's where we run into the first of many problems. This is what's typical if someone steals your mailbox or steals anything from you. You will call 911. Call taker will pick up, will take all the notes, take down all the information, what the story is, what happened, whatever information you can give them. Then they're going to send that message to a dispatcher. That dispatcher is going to send that message to an officer, a patrolman, a beatman, who is going to go out to that property or that residence and he's going to make the police report. He's going to take down all the vital information. He's going to take pictures and he's going to do a thorough investigation on the theft. This would be a patrol officer, a guy driving a blue and white car who works the same shift every day. This is his beat or at least his sector that he always works in. It's just a very routine theft case. The only difference is this will get forwarded to the postal inspector because it's a mailbox, which is a federal property. That's the only real difference here. But it's still just a patrolman. That is not what happened. Instead of this case going through patrol, this case went directly through a special unit called CIU, which is the Criminal Intelligence Unit. They are at the disposal of the chief, and they are assigned to do many difficult, complicated, and vital jobs that are important to public interest and to the safety of the people in Hawaii. They are tasked with very important, very difficult things. They would never touch a case like this. But in this case, that's exactly what happened. Instead of patrol taking the case, 
it was the criminal intelligence unit and they took on all the problems of that case and took it from there. But when the postal inspector ruled that there was no evidence linking Gerard Puano with the theft of the mailbox, somehow the Honolulu Police Department still arrested him. Then the KLOs even inflated the cost of the mailbox to push the theft above the felony threshold of $300. And don't forget, it's already a federal crime because it's a mailbox, which is technically the property of the United States Postal Service. But that's when Chief Kailoa manipulated and exploited the loyalty of the officers who served beneath him. He sold out his own brothers in blue and dragged them right into his mess. So when the civil trial began, Gerard Puana's attorneys uncovered information that exposed the many frauds and forgeries. Somehow, Chief Kailoa found this out, and when the chief was called to testify during trial, he violated the rules of testimony and forced a mistrial. This was a red flag for Puana's attorney. Instead of walking away, he turned the evidence into the FBI, and the FBI did what they do. They connected the dots, they rounded up the players involved, and they started dropping like flies. And as soon as the first officer flipped and agreed to testify, the others followed suit. Then in 2019, Nine years after this conspiracy began, Chief K. Law and Catherine K. Law pleaded guilty and filed for divorce. Lewis and Catherine K. Law were found guilty of conspiracy, and shortly after, they filed for divorce. That brings us to today, Monday, November 30th, 2020, where Catherine K. Law and Lewis K. Law were sentenced. Catherine K. Law was sentenced to 13 years in federal prison, and she was ordered to pay over $450,000 in restitution. Catherine Kailoa already pled guilty to stealing over $165,000 of inheritance from two children with whom she served as financial guardian. Children. She also pled guilty to bank fraud, aggravated identity theft, and federal drug charges involving her brother, which eliminated the need for two more trials. The Kailoas agreed separately to pay $165,000 to those children and to forfeit over $63,000 from the sale of the home that they shared together. Louis K. Law was sentenced to seven years in federal prison. In a powerful move by the judge, he used his own discretion and actually gave Catherine more time than is typical or is recommended for this crime. For the first time, Catherine K. Law apologized to her uncle Gerard Puana, but what was missing was an apology to her grandmother because her grandmother died in February of this year without closure and without peace. This crazy situation has been all over the news. The people of Hawaii are very familiar with what's happening and with what happened. And the crazy thing is, this isn't over. This is just the fraud cases. And who knows how involved she is with Mike Miski. We haven't seen the last of Catherine K. Law. And I'm confident that long after this 13-year sentence has been served, she'll be doing more time. So what I think... I do think that Louis K. Law did not have as big of a role in this as Catherine did. And I think that the things that Lewis did wrong, he did for his wife. And I'm not sure a lot of people would have done any different. It's actually weird that he stuck around. I don't know if it was out of embarrassment, but like she had cheated on him publicly. And the word on the street is she had been cheating on him privately. And he threw it all away. He threw away his career. He threw away his integrity. He threw away his reputation. He threw all his brothers in blue under the bus sucked them in to this case. He exploited the trust and the loyalty that the officers beneath him had for their chief. The sometimes gray areas that officers have to navigate, Louis K. Law exploited and took advantage of that situation. And now there are officers who are serving time for what he did. Those officers made mistakes and they'll pay for them. So it hurts my heart. If we're talking strictly about this case, it bothers me that Florence Puana died in the middle of this drama, never having seen justice. She died with a broken family, and that really hurts my heart. She was 100 years old. And then the next thing that bothers me is that the chief of police betrayed us. He betrayed the department. The brothers who swore to uphold the Constitution of the U.S. and of the state of Hawaii and conspired and influenced them to do wrong. The motto of Hawaii is, the life of the land is perpetuated in righteousness. And he betrayed that. 
And then the third thing that bothers me is that they were bullies. I can't stand bullies. There may not be anyone that hates a bully more than I do, but there's so much more that's going to come out of this. And this is just the beginning. And I hope that whatever cases Catherine Kailoa is involved in right now, between the drugs and the Mike Miskey stuff, that we're going to find out a lot more. I still don't know who stole that mailbox. Like, there's a lot of answers here that we need. And that's just in this case. There's other things I want to know. Like, I want to know what her involvement with Mike Miskey was. I want to know how my brother in blue received a phone call from a dangerous guy like Mike Miskey on his cell phone. I want to know if she was used to tapping into the police department this deep and she had access to all this stuff, how unsafe and dangerous she made it for my fellow officers who are putting their lives on the line and risking everything to catch bad guys. And she's over there leaking stuff to bad guys. Now, we can't prove this yet. But I am hopeful that we're going to find this stuff out. Because especially in the climate that we have today with everyone hating the police department, there are wonderful cops that are serving their communities that now have to deal with this. Because a lot of people will see Catherine and Louis Kilo and think that all officers are like that. And that's wrong. And this just makes things more difficult. I think that 13 years was appropriate for the bank fraud. I think that $450,000 in restitution is appropriate. And I think that Seven years for Louis K. Law is appropriate. I think the judge did a good job. Rarely do you ever see the judge give more time than what's recommended for that crime. But I think he saw how dangerous this could have been. So I'm going to move on from this case. Because I know this isn't the end. Find out more about what's going on with her and Mike Miskey. Let's find out what happened to Johnny Frazier. I'm going to find out what happened to Rick Calhoun. We need more answers. And I think we'll get them. Just today, two more people flipped on Mike Miskey. There's going to be a lot more. And I think Catherine Kellaw knows that this is going to get worse. I think she's going to flip on Mike too. Today, we saw justice served. As heinous as the crimes were, as vulnerable as Hawaii is, and as painful as it is to hear that the people that we trusted and put in power abused that trust, this isn't anything new for Hawaii. Hawaii will overcome this. They will change. They will thrive. They will adapt. That's what Hawaii does. Today, Hawaii became cleaner. Hawaii became a better place. So here's to moving forward. Let's keep doing what we're doing. We'll get the answers we need, and eventually we'll get the healing. As always, I'll leave links to the sources that I used for my research in the description below. I want to say thank you guys for watching. I appreciate all the support, and until the next time, aloha.